Rockwell had begun to capture American leaders in portrait. Rockwell's 1960 portrait of John F. Kennedy was used again in the memorial issue after the president's assassination. It was Rockwell's final cover for the Post. During the 60s, Rockwell's primary focus was current events and social issues. His social commentary for Look magazine was fearless and unblinking. He embraced the idealism and courage of a nation charting its future. Norman Rockwell chronicled the American century as no one else did. His works number in the thousands, images of a nation's evolution with extraordinary mass appeal. In a changing world, he was a reassuring guide. Technology fascinated Americans and Rockwell shared that fascination. Henry Ford sold Model T's by the millions and Rockwell loved to show the automobile's impact for better and for worse. Rockwell also came of age with manned flight, from the first person to fly the Atlantic, to the dawn of commercial air travel, to man's adventures in space, he captured it all. He celebrated our thirst for entertainment in all of its forms, from the national pastime, to Hollywood, to the debut of television. Rockwell captured our rites of passage with wit, and wisdom. His subtlest observations addressed complex social issues. Rockwell looked back with pride at our rich national and literary heritage. In Family Tree, Rockwell imagines an American lineage unfettered by class or ethnicity, linking past and future. Rockwell said, I was showing the America I knew and observed to others who might not have noticed. His eye for everyday drama and his devotion to detail guided his creative process. He strived for authenticity in his settings and props. He collected all manner of clothes and costumes. At first he used professional models. Later, the camera allowed him to use anyone who could hold still for a picture. He recruited family and friends and scores of neighbors. He had a knack for finding just the right face and then seeing how high the eyebrows could go. Rockwell was both coach and model, using his own elastic face to demonstrate expressions. Rockwell said, meeting deadlines and thinking up ideas are the scourges of an illustrator's life. His subjects varied, but his process remained the same. He took photographs, sometimes by the hundred, tinkering with lighting, posing and reposing models, isolating elements of the scene. From these came charcoal sketches, usually the size of the final painting. At this point, he analyzed the composition and tones and solved technical problems. Color studies showed him how his choices would play on the newsstand. Finally, surrounded by all his references, he'd set to work on the final painting. Though Rockwell greatly admired the old masters as well as contemporary artists, he said, the great band of illustrators have shown us to ourselves. I am proud to be of their company. He was both an illustrator and an artist. The kind of thing I like to do, uh, I know it isn't, it isn't the highest form of art, there's no doubt in the world about that, and I know it better than anybody else. I love to tell stories and pictures. The story is the first thing and the last thing. That isn't uh, uh, what a fine art man goes for, but I go for it, and I just love to do it that way, see. Though he died in 1978, Rockwell's reputation has remained strong, continually growing. Today, the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, welcomes 200,000 visitors a year. Some come to remember, some to discover. 
His studio where he created many of his most beloved works now stands on the museum grounds. Norman Rockwell left us with images of and for the American people, reminding us to believe in ourselves, honor the past, embrace the future, and see ourselves as he did, with warmth and compassion. <laughs>